Welcome to the Coming Apocalypse. Evangelist and Pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Welcome. This is the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley, and you might need to just sit down right now and strap in a seatbelt because we're going to be bringing to you today some very powerful information that I think we're aware of, but we just would rather not know. But it is actually in the biblical prophecies of the Word of God. And I call this the Babylon prophecy simply because what is taking place in ancient Babylon. And so if you grab your Bibles quickly, we'll go to the word of the Lord. We'll be in Jeremiah chapter 50, verses 41 through 46. It's not even a question that ISIS, Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, uh, just uh, literally just emerged onto the scene last uh, in June of 2014. And when they begin to just take ground, take cities, Uh, literally conquering large swaths of land throughout Iraq and then moving into Syria, Uh, you could tell that the situation was they were on a mission. This wasn't just going to be a few victories and then wait and see what they should do next. They weren't plotting another 9-11 situation like we saw with Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda. This is a whole different deal. These people are focused on bringing about the Mahdi, the return of the 12th Imam, uh, and they believe to do that, it, it requires massive chaos, massive casualties, and eventually uh, an invasion of Jerusalem. But let's go to the word of the Lord, if we will, in Jeremiah chapter 50. The Bible says, Behold, a people shall come from the north and a great nation, And many kings shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. They shall hold the bow and the lance. They are cruel and will not show mercy. Their voice shall roar like the sea, and they shall ride upon horses, every one put in array like a man to the battle against thee, O daughter of Babylon. The king of Babylon hath heard the report of them, and his hands waxed feeble, anguish took hold of him, and pains as a woman in travail. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan unto the habitation of the strong, but I will make them suddenly run away from her. And who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? For who is like me? And who will appoint me the time? And who is that shepherd that will stand before me? Therefore, hear ye the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Babylon and his purposes that he hath purposed against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. And at the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved and the cry is heard among the nations. The People from the north, in verse 41. Uh, If you study a little bit about ISIS, the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, their leader is a man by the name of uh, al-Baghdadi. And he calls himself the caliph, and he says this is the Islamic caliphate. And so as they begin to emerge on the scene, literally out of northern Iraq, they are a people from the north. They call themselves Islamic State, or they're a nation. So they've declared themselves a nation. And in some of their videos, they've sent warnings to the nation of the cross. Well, that would be to all Christians throughout the world. So you have a kingdom rising against a kingdom exactly like Jesus said would happen in Matthew 24 when he was asked, can you tell us the signs of thy coming and the end of the world? And Jesus said, well, you'll have false Christ and false prophets shall rise and they shall deceive many. And uh, 
you'll hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And so what's going to happen is these are spiritual kingdoms. Uh, and it's, they're starting to rise in a very combative and uh, a, a situation that's a spiritual warfare is taking place literally before our very eyes. And so uh, this ISIS, Islamic State, they have risen up in the northern part of Iraq. And many kings have, been, have taken notice of what they're doing worldwide. They shall hold the bow and the lance, it says in verse 42. They are cruel and will not show mercy. We know that's true. They carry their weapons with them. I actually have seen where they're riding in Toyota Tundras, riding from one village or city to another, filling up the back of the truck with uh, ISIS warriors, holding their weapons in the air, uh, their black flags waving in the wind, coming into cities and literally devastating them. They've crucified Christians, beheadings, uh, so much atrocities they have brought upon, mass murdering, and the things they've done. They are striking fear not only in the local populations in Iraq, but then they videotape it and they send it on the Internet in different places and they promote it to strike fear in the nations of the world. They are cruel. They show no mercy. They use different uh, horrific uh, techniques and to bring great destruction and fear upon many people. And if they want to paralyze the general public of the world to fear them. This is a prophetic group that has come in the last days and they're right there in the heart of Babylon. Matter of fact, Baghdad is one of the cities they want to conquer. They've also said they want to conquer Rome. They said they wanted to put the black flag of ISIS over the White House in Washington. They say they want to conquer Jerusalem. Now, they could be, you might say, you know, they're pretty ambitious. They'll never get there. Well, nobody thought within a one-year period they would control 50% of Iraq and 40% of Syria. No one's seen this coming. No one even heard of them. And their recruiting methods are brilliant as they're using different types of social media to radicalize and to spread their message of hate. And truly, they are from the spirit of darkness itself. I mean, if there was ever a modern-day Nephilim, I would say it is these holy warriors they call themselves of ISIS but they're absolutely filled with the demonic spirits of darkness. Satan himself must be literally directing every move they make. And so we as Christians must be spiritually prepared to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ that are being persecuted all over the world. Here in America, we've been so blessed. We live in the land of free and the home of the brave. And we've had religious freedoms that's given us the opportunities to be, have the freedom of speech, the freedom of expression, the freedom to assemble, the freedom to worship. But we're living in a time now when we're seeing that even those very freedoms that are constitutionally protected may also be coming under assault. Now, as the spirit of darkness moves throughout the land, notice what it says in verse 42. They shall hold the bow and the lance, they are cruel and will not show mercy. Their voice shall roar like the sea, and they shall ride upon horses, every one put in array like a man to battle against the O daughter of Babylon. The king of Babylon. Well, when ISIS first rose up, the prime minister was actually by name, a man by the name of Al-Maliki, and he had been actually chosen, uh, or I should say handpicked, if you will. He had been approved uh, under the Bush administration, and he had actually been a prime minister of uh, Iraq for about uh, eight years. But when ISIS rose up, his soldiers, his military men, literally dropped their guns, took off their uniforms, and ran home. Uh, the United States, unfortunately, had pulled out of Iraq and had given a 14-month um, 
date when they were leaving, and the enemy just sat and waited. They picked up the hardware that we left there, several billion dollars worth, enough to fund an army, and ISIS went to work, went to work on a plan that I believe is ancient in nature, and they began to take the land of the Chaldeans. So as they started to move through Iraq, it was quite obvious that Malachi could not stop them. So what happened was his hands waxed feeble. He literally was in anguish, and uh, he had to be removed. Uh, he resigned. President Barack Obama uh, wanted to make sure that the next leader of Iraq was someone that would be a little more stronger, would have a better communications maybe with Washington. And uh, a man was chosen by the name of Haider al-Abadi, and he is now the prime minister of Iraq. And it seems like he's made a little bit of headway, slowing down ISIS some, but not, not taking back really any ground. And ISIS really focused their energies in Syria. Now, I was in San Diego, California back in January, and there was a man I spoke to who actually came from Iraq and lived in Mosul, which is the ancient city of Nineveh. He says to me, uh, he had seen where I had talked about the Babylon prophecy before, and he says to me, uh, I want you to know something. You know when you talk about the land of the Chaldeans? He said, you're absolutely right. I speak Chaldean. And this very area that ISIS is conquering is the remnant uh, ancestor, uh, you know, the remnant uh, people who uh, are originally from the Chaldean people. And we speak Chaldean in that area. And he actually spoke it very fluently to me there in San Diego. And so I began to realize, wow, because when you look at the scriptures, it tells you that they will come against the land of the Chaldeans and try to conquer it. It says it in verse 45. It says, therefore, hear ye the counsel of the Lord, that he that hath taken against Babylon and his purposes, that he hath purposed against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation uh, desolate with them. So it is the land of the Chaldeans. And actually, I did some more research and found out that central Iraq and central Syria is the land of the Chaldeans. So an actual prophecy from the prophet Jeremiah is being played out right before our very eyes. And if you notice here, it says that the least of the flock shall draw them out. Well, the Kurds are the smallest ethnic group outside of Christians in Iraq, okay? You have the Sunni, uh, you have the Sunni Muslims, you have the Shiite Muslims, you have the Yiddis, which is a very small minority group. You have the Christians, but then you have the Kurds. Ethnically, the Kurds are, are, are a smaller group, but strong and mighty, and they defend their land. And so this very verse tells you that they will try to conquer the land of the Chaldeans, but it will be the least of the flock or the Kurds that will literally draw them into battle. It wasn't until the Kurds started fighting against the ISIS regime that the United States of America and five other Arabic nations built a coalition of strategic bombing to try to slow ISIS down. ISIS at one time took over the Dam of Mosul, which if they would have blown up that dam it would have sent water, a raging tsunami through the desert and would have literally done devastation. Several towns and villages would have been wiped out and it would have done great flooding in the city of Baghdad. But fortunately, they have lost control of that due to the bombing campaigns. But they did get and take over the city of Mosul where they did great atrocities murdering the madness, the mayhem. I mean, are you serious? These people literally went into the, where the tomb of Jonah, the prophet Jonah, and took sledgehammers destroying the tomb of Jonah. And that wasn't good enough. They then uh, put explosives in it and blew the entire uh, facility apart, just blew it apart. No regard for historical artifacts in different cities, different areas, destroying 
ancient artifacts, not only from biblical times, but even from the, uh, you know, with the children of Israel, let's say, but also uh, some of the artifacts of the Babylonians. ISIS has absolutely focused on bringing terror to the world. Their end time eschatology, their theology is to bring the Mahdi by way of destruction, by way of chaos, by way of fear, uh, preaching a radical Islamic view of by using Sharia law. So as this goes on, folks, it's important. You might say, well, what does it have to do with us and the body of Christ? Well, it has a lot to do with us. It's our brothers and sisters in Christ that are losing their lives right now, without question, in Iraq and Syria. Uh, but it's also, there is persecutions taking place and fear toward the Western world. Matter of fact, we know in Dallas back in May, there was the uh, attack on the uh, convention in Dallas, Texas there. Uh, the, the men who tried to take down this convention were stopped. They were shot dead and, and prevented from going into this uh, convention, free speech convention. I think that's the one with Pam Geller was in. Up in Canada in October 22nd, 2014, they went into the parliament. Uh, again, ISIS claimed credit for this, going to the parliament uh, and trying to take over the Canadian parliament, also killing soldiers next to a war memorial, uh, bringing fear upon the nation of Canada. In Australia, again, ISIS lone wolf attack at some of the, at a, uh, at a chocolate store, basically, chocolate candy store, uh, and uh, people died there. It ended up being a storming the place to stop them. In France, back in January the 7th, 2015, we know what happened at the magazine uh, publisher uh, where a group of editors were setting, and a lone, uh, again, lone wolf attack, two men, uh, ended up killing 13 people there at the uh, magazine there in Paris, France also taking over a Jewish uh, supermarket or a Jewish deli, killing four people there. Uh, a tr uh, absolute lone wolf attacks. And in Belgium, in Brussels, in uh, June of 1st of 2014, another terrorist attack there. There's constant threats. We know that America has been under unbelievable high alert, the in especially this summer back in uh, uh, the July 4th weekend. We've seen that. We've seen many things take place as the radical Islamic groups. And, oh, by the way, you can talk about Boko Haram. They've now uh, joined their allegiance, if you will, to ISIS. It's Boko Haram who captured the 300 schoolgirls. But the, a lot of the mass media will not tell you, secular media, is that the schoolgirls were Christian. This wasn't just any school. This was a Christian school that they abducted the 300 girls. Uh, and, and they went through village to village. Boko Haram, a radical Islamic group, uh, persecuting Christians and anybody that gets in their way, uh, spreading their message of hate. We know that this, this definitely tells us that we're living in a time that we never thought we would see. Now, I want to go to the Matthew chapter 24 for just a moment. Look at this verse. The Bible tells us, as Jesus was talking about all the different apocalyptic signs of the end times and his second coming, and in verse 9, Matthew 24, 9, it says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and sh ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So this persecution is something we are seeing happening. Literally, we know our Christian brothers have been and sisters have been persecuted in China. We know the Castro brothers, what they did in Cuba. We know what Idi Amin did in the 70s in Uganda. We're aware of the Christian persecution in Somalia. We know right now also what's going on in Pakistan and the hatred in uh, India to Christians. What about North Korea's imprisonment and uh, public execution of Christians? I mean, we could go on and on and on. So when you look at things in the end times, to see this rise in 40 nations of the world, Christians are being persecuted unto death. 
40 nations. You would think this would be like uh, breaking news, breaking news. There is a, a genocide happening here. But instead, uh, we are being rocked to sleep uh, as, as far as a society is concerned with a lack of interest because it doesn't fit some folks' uh, agenda. I'm here to tell you that as Christians, we know the Lord is coming soon. These are part of the signs, not just the water turning blood red or a plague of locusts showing up in Madagascar, not just the drought in, Can in, um, in California, not just the different types of earthquakes which were on pace to break the all-time record of earthquakes in a single year over 6.0, or we're on pace to break the, most, the record for the most volcanic eruptions in a single year. No, not just the extreme weather conditions we've seen, but the persecution of the church is one of the main signs that the Bible tells us will be a part of the last days. And so we're living in it now. It's not a question of if the last days are coming. It's a question of how close are we to the coming of Jesus Christ? And the next question is, are you ready if the Lord should come? Matter of fact, are you ready if death should find you or me or anyone? You know, the Bible says it's a point on men once to die and after this, the judgment. But I'm glad the Lord said these words. Jesus said, the thief cometh not, but for to kill, steal, and destroy. But I've come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. The Lord Jesus said, I'll give you love, joy, peace, and the Holy Ghost. You can be blessed going in, blessed going out, the head and not the tail. You can be blessed in your life if you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Right now, you could go to my website, and there are people in the chat room live at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. And you could just go in there right now and say, hey, I'm coming from the television broadcast, and I want to get saved. And there are people there waiting. I'm in there if it's a Friday evening. And uh, we're waiting for you uh, to pray with you and to help you come to Christ. You know, last week when this broadcast ended, uh, within 30 seconds the phone rang and a man in Houston, Texas, wanting to give his life to the Lord. He was very apprehensive about everything going on in the world. Had been for some time, he said. And we prayed. Another lady called out of Arizona. She accepted Christ. Matter of fact, in this past week, we've had 22 people online in our chat rooms asked to be saved. In other words, another sign of the end times is not just all the wars and all the atrocities, but a great harvest, a harvest of souls coming to Christ, an end time outpouring of the latter rain, a great harvest of salvations of people from around the world that are giving their life to Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm scheduled in November of 2015 to actually hold a crusade in India. I believe we're going to see hundreds, if not more, maybe thousands of people come to Christ. They're anticipating five, 6,000 people will be in this place where I'll be speaking. And I believe, I know, that there are many people who are truly hungering for the Word of God because we're seeing the end-time apocalyptic events. We're watching Bible prophecy unfold before our very eyes. Uh, let me just say, we've had a tremendous response since we've been on television. In our very first week, uh, there was a major bump uh, in our ministry from folks that are watching. They are realizing that in the last days, people may need to know what's going on and what does the body of Christ need to do during these times. Well, number one, focus on the Lord. You know, Jesus said, watch and pray. For an hour you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Uh, so we don't know the day nor the hour. Jesus said no man knows the day nor the hour. No, not the angels which are in heaven, not even Jesus Christ himself, not the Son of God, but the Father only. But we can see the day approaching. And each week on this broadcast, we will bring you different segments of biblical prophecy in the Word. It's literally coming to life right before your very eyes. I remember as a young teenager watching Jack Van Impey, actually, uh, and he would talk about Bible prophecy and say, someday you're going to see this, and there's a day coming you'll see that. 
Well, now we don't hear that being said. We report on what is happening today and what's happening now. That's how far we have moved into biblical prophecy. And so there's not a question of if it's the last days. It's a question of when is he coming and are you ready to meet him? And so I would highly recommend that you give your life to Jesus Christ and be born into the kingdom of God. The uh, Babylon prophecy, the rise of ISIS, they will not stop. They're actually headed toward Jerusalem. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us in Luke 21, uh, verse 20, one verse, it says, when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. And so as these armies are beginning to circle, we just seen ISIS attack the Egyptian military in the Sinai Peninsula, killing 70 of their soldiers right on the border of Israel. Meanwhile, Al-Qaeda and Al-Nusa are on the border of Israel up in the Golan Heights. We already know Hezbollah says they're coming toward Jerusalem. So there's not a question of whether or not these biblical prophecies will come to pass. They are coming to pass, and we are living in the last days. Are you saved? I want to encourage you. Folks, I'm going to be preaching in Dallas, Texas. In Dallas, Texas, September 12th at the K. Uh, Hutchison Convention Center. September 12th. It's an all-day conference. Uh, I also have uh, a couple other speakers with me as well. And uh, I guarantee you come and spend the day and receive the powerful anointing word of God that September 12th in Dallas, Texas, at the uh, K. Hutchinson Convention Center. Wow, we're out of time. I want to see you next week. God bless. Thank you so much for watching the broadcast. I really appreciate it. And I'll tell you something. If you'd like to know more about some of our books that we've written, go to our website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. That's www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. I've even got music CDs. I've actually have a couple country gospel music CDs that we recorded that I think you'll really enjoy. I have five books that I've written. This is my newest one, Jerusalem Jihad. Jerusalem Jihad. This has to do about an end time apocalyptic scenario that includes the rebuilding of the temple, also uh, the two witnesses, and uh, it's a powerful presentation, if you will, on how things are starting to come together here in the last days. So again, check out all of our books uh, CDs and everything else we have and your donations are greatly appreciated at our website. God bless you in Jesus name.